Today, uh, as a little present to you, the viewer, uh, I've had a request, actually it was, it's not the first request, for compression testing. What is it and why do we do it? A compression test is a test that's done to assess the mechanical health of the engine. Inside an engine you have cylinders. Those cylinders are basically sealed chambers that uh, have controlled openings and those controlled openings are the intake and exhaust valves. With a compression test what you're doing is you're checking the seals inside that combustion chamber. You're checking the piston rings, you're checking the valves and whether or not the engine has the ability to produce compression. If an engine can't compress air then uh, it really can't produce power because really an engine is a glorified air compressor. This is a compression gauge. Step one is you need to remove the spark plugs. Let's do that. For me, whenever I'm pulling spark plugs out of a car, I want to take a look at them because they're a window into the combustion chamber to give me an idea what's going on. And if you're to a point where you feel you need a, a, com a compression test, uh, either you've got an engine miss or you don't have the power that you thought you had, that kind of thing, uh, this is a good indicator because these are, as I said, a window into the combustion chamber. What you're looking for is pretty much what you see here. These all look pretty much the same. There are other scenarios where, like say it's all gummed up with stuff that usually means it's burning oil or something like that. Sometimes you see damage to the spark plug, like say for instance this electrode or whatever is uh, broken or missing or something like that. It may still produce a spark, but not as good as it's supposed to be. Next phase of the operation is to take your uh, hose from your compression tester. There are two different size spark plug holes. Um, and this one here is of the smaller size. So, and this has an adapter for both the larger and the smaller. I start with number one spark plug. And you can tell number one spark plug because number one spark plug is the one that is closest to the, end, closest to the front of the engine. How do you determine that on a V-shaped engine? Well, if you look at a V-shaped engine, you'll notice one half of the engine seems a little bit closer to the front of the engine than the other. The reason for this is because the pistons are offset. So there's one side of the engine that's actually a little closer to the front than the other. Next, I'm going to take my compression gauge and hook it up. Quite simply. Real quick, before you get in the car and start cranking the engine, it's a good idea to disconnect the ignition system. That way you don't have spark that's not having anywhere to go. So I, and this car is really easy, I just disconnect the connectors at the distributor. And perhaps it can be the same for you. So look for the ignition system, look for the primary side and just unplug whatever's there and it will disable the ignition system. You can also disable the injectors by putting your gas pedal all the way to the floor. This puts it in what's called clear flood mode and turns off the injectors. But in this case, you're doing this so that you don't have gas spraying into cylinders that you're not really using. Next, quite simply, you or a buddy needs to be inside the car to crank the engine. Do a five count. What you'll hear is that you'll hear the engine turning over and I usually count to five every time I hear the little gallop or skip. So one, two, three, four, five. Here's where the academic part comes in. Get yourself a notepad. How many cylinders I have here is four. Uh, if you have six, eight, whatever, write down a number for each corresponding cylinder. I put a D and a W here, and the reason for that is the D is for the dry test, the W is for the wet test. We'll get to the wet test in a moment, but first let's write down our reading. Looks so like cylinder number one is about 122. This has a little release on the side of it that uh, lets the compressed air out. Now we're going to do a wet test. You want to perform this test twice per cylinder. Once with nothing in the uh, spark plug hole and next you want to do it with a little shot of oil. And you, you don't want to fill the whole cylinder with oil. You just want to put a little bit down in there just to coat the top of the piston. That's all you really need. Uh, since these spark plugs are down inside a well, I have taken a little piece of vacuum line, put it on the end of my oil squirter there to create like a nice longer little piece here in a modified sense. And you just want to squirt a little bit down in the hole and since 
this is so long, I'm going to do this until I see some oil. There we go. Couple of squirts. That's all you need. Reinstall. That looks like 160. You might be thinking, Eric, 122 and 160, there's a big difference there. This is an older engine, and to be honest, anytime you do a wet test, it's going to be more than a dry test. Uh, what you're looking for here is consistency. You're looking for a precipitous drop in compression via uh, per cylinders. If it's all the way across the board and it's pretty much similar, pretty much means it's okay, it's probably just worn out. I'll go over this in a minute, but I'm going to run through the rest of the cylinders real quick. Now let's talk a little bit about what these numbers mean. I have, as you can see there, 122 and 160 on number one, 120, 145, 145 and 145, 148 and 145. Uh, these last two cylinders, as far as the wet test goes, I'm thinking maybe that I didn't squirt enough oil down in there. There really wasn't that much of a change uh, in those. What you're looking for is a huge difference, uh, I would say, you know, 30% or more between cylinders. If you see this, and say you have like a rough idle, you can spend all day looking at injectors or an ignition problem or something like that, and it could be something, I don't want to say as simple, but something as simple as a, a compression problem within the engine or uh, a cylinder that's not able to keep up with its uh, brothers and sisters over there. There needs to be consistency. An engine is designed to be precisely that. If you want it to run smooth, every cylinder needs to produce the same amount of power. If you have a cylinder that's significantly down on power, then you need to look at that particular cylinder and find out what's going on. Also, say for instance you have two cylinders that are right next to each other and they both have low compression. I've seen this before, uh, and it's caused by normally a head gasket failure. The gasket will fail between the two cylinders, and the compression will go back and forth between them, and those two cylinders will be down. So if you have two cylinders that are right next to each other that are similarly down on compression, then it's a good possibility that that's what you're looking at. Compression loss can come from several different places. Uh, it can come from the valves themselves, either being burnt or uh, bent or not sealing properly for whatever reason. It can come from the piston rings. The piston rings can either be worn out uh, and also the cylinder walls themselves can also be worn out, not creating a good enough seal on the piston as it, as it travels up and down inside the combustion chamber. Uh, any, any number of things can, can pretty much cause compression to be down, but to narrow that down, the leak down test is really the way to go. If there's a significant difference between a wet test and a dry test, the most likely cause for that is the piston rings not sealing against the inside of the bore. What happens when you squirt that oil in there is it will travel around the outside of the piston and pretty much seal, help seal those microscopic gaps that are in between the piston rings and the walls of the cylinder. Uh, if that's the case, and it usually does go up one way or another when you do a wet test, but if it's a huge difference, it probably means you have worn out piston rings and in essence a worn out engine because you can't just put piston rings on something. It's also the bore that it's in that gets bigger. It gets a little bit tapered because the piston is constantly moving up and down within it and the wear of the piston rings is oftentimes equal to the cylinder wall. So if you're going to do piston rings, you really need to bore it or sleeve it or that means pretty much renew the cylinder sealing surface. If you're to that point and it's a significant problem and the engine doesn't run correctly, then it's probably time to replace the engine. Uh, these things can be repaired, but sometimes the expense and time and effort that goes into repairing an engine exceeds just going out and getting another one from a salvage yard or remanufactured or something like that. If I find myself hitting a wall in my diagnosis and I still can't figure out why the engine is running rough or something, whip out the compression tester, take a look. Uh, the next step would be a leak down test. I'll cover that in another video. But for now, this will give you a general start. Once again, thank you for watching. You can always visit me at ericthecarguy.com.